Well, hello. Once again, this is me, Leonard Wells, broadcasting as usual from Haslingdon, north of Manchester in the UK. Today is Wednesday, the 14th of July, 2010. And this is my vlog and my uh, pontification, if you like, my uh, reflections on the world today. What have I done in the past couple of days that's worth mentioning? Yesterday, I decided to go and see an osteopath lady in Preston, in Lancashire. And um, I have a bus pass, so I took the bus to Accrington, where they are building a nice new station, and incidentally, a big new Tesco's next to the station, and I took the train from there to Preston. And uh, I made a f mistake in Preston because I hadn't realised it was so far from the station to the little clinic where this osteopath lady operates or practices. And I set up walking and I, I halfway I realised it was too late to get a taxi. So I legged it at a heck of a leg. And uh, by the time I got there, I was sweating like uh, the proverbial pig. And uh, she gave me the treatment, which was excellent. And I've, I woke up this morning feeling as relaxed as a baby. Slept soundly. And I'm going back next Tuesday for some more. Now, I'm coming home. I caught the bus. And when I got off the bus in Preston, I was confronted by a, quite a group of... Uh, students who just received their degrees and they were wearing caps and gowns as they walked through the main street or one of the main streets in Preston and I was a little sad because I went to university last October and gave it up after two weeks because I found it a bit of a strain logistically it was a bit too much for me at my age at least that's what I tell myself Anyway, I then caught the train home, by which time I found I had a very bad blister or pain on my, in my left foot from, from all the walking. And I got home after buying a big nice uh, 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 walnut cake at the co-op, half of which I ate, which is bad for me as a diabetic. Uh, and um, there you have it. The rest of the evening I spent catching up on my emails, my PC engineers, who are a married couple who work very hard and call themselves guardian angels, PC guardian angels, which I think is very cute. They're called Graham and Carol, by the way. And um, they're in process of switching my Yahoo mail onto pot three. Now, what in the name of heaven that means, I don't quite know, except I understand instead of the email being web-based, it will become computer-based. Precisely how it operates, I don't know. I just trust it. Because it's a bit like sex, really. You trust that it happens and hope for the best and wish it will and so on. Anyway, when I woke this morning, I started to think about the terrible nightmare, the banking crisis that we've been all been through and the way all these bankers were playing, were gambling with our money, gambling with other people's money. Can you imagine that? You know when you walk slightly disapprovingly past a betting shop and it's full of men smoking and uh, reading the uh, Racing Gazette or the Racing Bugle or Trumpet or whatever it's called and wasting their hard-earned money gambling on some bitten horse and um, you, you feel a bit disapproving about that now these bankers were worse than that because they were playing games not just with money but with people's lives they were buying groups of mortgages wrapping them up in kind of financial brown paper and then flogging them onto some other poor soul uh, who then flogged them onto somebody else and then some of them were even betting 
that those mortgages, which had been lent to poor people in America largely, would go to the war. So they were having it all uh, both ways. Now, if that's what banking is all about, I'll eat my blooming hat. And I think they're all shysters, the lot of them, and they ought to be thoroughly ashamed of the way they've gone about things and the mess they've made of this planet. When you think the money that they lost, God in heaven's name, all those poor people starving in Africa, and we wasted all that money, for what? So they could get some nice fat bonuses. You hear them talking that if we dare to tax them, they might leave the country and go and take refuge in, in Switzerland, where everybody seems to be hiding from the tax man. Well, if they want to go to Switzerland, I'll volunteer to drive them to the airport and good riddance to bad rubbish. Now, what I'd like to come down to is the humanity of things. The Christianity, the Christian principle, the, is the Islamic principle and the Jewish principle. The uh, Old Testament principle. I'm talking about mortgages. It always seems to me that on this planet it seems a bit unfair that in a mortgage arrangement, a mortgage deal, the person who supplies the money has 100% of the bargain, of the deal. The person who gets the mortgage, all he has is the use of the money. The person who lends the money has everything in his favour. He can ask for it back within the hours, within hours and quite within his right. And if you, for any reason, don't pay for a few months, he can take you to court, take the house off you and sell it for any price he wishes. Take what he wants and if there's anything left, you get what's left, if anything at all. And to make matters worse, just to be sure that he gets his money's worth, he takes out an insurance policy to cover any difference between what he can sell the house for and what he's owed. And you pay the premiums. Now, if you're thrown out of your house, you then become a liability of the local authority. And if we have to put you up in bed and breakfast, it can cost up to a thousand pounds a week. Now, what right has somebody who's lending money to people to buy a house the right to throw that person onto the street and cost the rest of us a thousand pound a week just to keep his business happy. It just It's never seemed sensible to me to do that. Why don't we have some kind of insurance? I mean for the people who want to pay but who may be prevented by illness for example, not for those who suddenly decide they're not going to pay at all, they're going to spend the money somewhere else. I mean the genuine cases. We need to have some kind of insurance paid for by the person who lends the money and the person who borrows. 50-50, because they're both sharing the risk. Now, I've probably overstayed my time, my 10 minutes on YouTube, so I'm going to finish there. I will continue a little bit later about this idea of some kind of insurance and how it affects us. God bless, while it's still legal to say God bless, take care. All the best from Haslingdon. Have a nice day.